were sharing your screen and this looked like it was the screen I was sharing. Will you believe me? <laughs> so thanks everyone for joining um, this session. So in this session, we're going to talk a bit more about um, how to evaluate programs like Lifting Your Neighbourhoods Together. Um, I'm very thanks everyone for attended my previous session. Um, I'm obviously very conscious that we've just done a couple of hours or even a bit more of a couple of hours of us just talking to people. Um, so I'm quite keen in this one. I was just going to present a few, few slides at the beginning um, about approaches which we've used to evaluate particularly the systems change aspect of lifting neighbourhoods together and then open it up to a bit of a discussion. Um, and I've got some prompt questions about how uh, the, the sort of the approach which we've used would work for you, wouldn't work for you, what's um, what you need to consider, uh, but also I guess it's an opportunity if you've got any questions off the back of the presentation about lifting neighbours together and the evaluation of it, um, just a free opportunity to ask questions because obviously there wasn't an opportunity after the session to ask questions. Um, so I, I guess in this slide, just to show that of, of the, all the evaluation, the bit which I'm going to talk about in this session is really the sort of the systems-based um, theory of change approach which we've used. Um, and as part of that, we've developed a systems maturity matrix um, to help us help us almost like understand and evaluate um, how and whether we can say systems change has, has worked. Um, but also, hopefully, this matrix can help inform actually people wanting to undertake a sort of systems change approach in their work. Um, obviously, not wanting to create something which is a measuring tool which then just prompts a set of behaviors but hopefully it can be more informative um, so i guess just to start from the beginning i think it's important to say that systems change um and and, and the approach to systems change is actually is quite complex for evaluation it has quite a lot of complex complexity um in systems change because it's um obviously it's adaptive relies on very different it's working together, it changes over time, um, involves multiple different actors, um, each trying to pull towards different goals. Um, so therefore that complexity doesn't lend itself that easy to some more traditional scientific evaluation approaches. So traditional approaches work quite well when you've got quite a linear something, or if you're just making widgets, it's just like, well, if you do this, it then results in this. If you, for example, if you're trialing a medicine, um, let some in. Um, if you're trialing a medicine, you administer the drug, does it, what effect does it have? Systems change is not really like that. So therefore, what you need to do is just develop a different way of trying to understand and evaluate it. And a response which we've come up with on this evaluation on a few of the similar kinds of studies looking at systems change is to develop a new approach um, which straddles different evaluation paradigms or methods that want to get too deep lost in the in sort of technical language now, what it does is it uses almost like a systems a theory of change approach of a real evidence-based account of actually well how is systems change meant to be happening or envisaged to happen in the particular context so obviously this way it's how um, community renewal and building futures east envisage systems change working and trying to understand and articulate that in a map and trying to understand sort of the contextual factors which will affect the sort of success or delivery of, of of the intervention so that's kind of the theory based approach bit but also this idea that we want to understand the kind of uh, maturity matrix element of um um systems change and that's really to measure and evaluate the sort of the change process so and the kind of the sort of the pathway to success so maturity matrices they're often quite using kind of business um software development it's almost understanding that if, if you just keep making small changes to the way systems work they become more mature mature they become more efficient and effective and then and hopefully deliver better outcomes so it's trying to take that kind of that kind of approach to um um systems change and underpinning that we sort of dive uh develop a sort of underpinning analytic framework which identifies um bits which are probably quite common of systems or like key systems infrastructure um and the characteristics and almost like trying to understand actually well if you a system is becoming more mature across various different 
aspects or infrastructure, you're likely to see almost like various stages of improvement along the way, uh, which we call different levels of maturity. Uh, so just to start to think about sort of the systems based theories of change. So this diagram probably needs some explanation, need, definitely needs some explanation. Um, so in broader sense, I guess what, what the sort of hypothesis of um, lifting neighbourhoods together is this kind of this sort of middle row here. So it's the circles. So you get the idea that actually there's there's the community, there's the lifting neighbourhoods together project, and there's a wider ecosystem of services um, delivery partners. And at the minute, quite separate. Um, in many ways, the ecosystem probably should be characterised by actually lots of little dots, which are in, in themselves. So I was like, the communities are working on its own, lifting neighbourhoods together broadly working on its own. The ecosystem is a lot of organizations, yeah, working partly in, in partnership together, but quite a lot of like, almost a view on sort of linear working. But then over time, as we get this idea of systems change, the community lifting everything together and the ecosystem start pulling together um, to become more integrated. Uh, and then obviously finally the ecosystem becomes quite enmeshed, working together and obviously working with the community as well. And then the sort of lifting everything together actually gets just embedded into the ecosystem. So that's where the, that, that's where that blue dot goes. It sort of becomes part of the ecosystem and the community because the ecosystems work in a certain way. So all services are working a certain way uh, and the community's got the infrastructure uh, and the, sort of the, the empowerment to actually, and the agency to, to deliver their own way. So as part of that process, what we're, what we're saying as part of the maturity matrix is actually there's various aspects of infrastructure behaviors. So we've identified that aspects of planning, of governments, of service delivery and, and evidence. Um, and actually those aspects will move in a, in a sort of a, a, a maturity pattern. So they'll go from almost like building to uh, we've classified it as five steps. So a basic level, a building level, a developing level, a developed and sustaining. So these individual aspects will move and become more mature. And as part of that, they'll, they'll lead to this sort of services becoming more embedded, working more integrated, working together. Uh, and this will turn lead to a range of outcomes. This is the top line. So we see community outcomes. So lifting neighborhoods together, people are lifted out of poverty. Um, have better service experience of, of the service in the area. Um, lifting everything together will achieve its various outcomes and the service, the system will have various outcomes as well. So because the service system will become more efficient, um, more cost-effective, um, yeah, uh, hopefully more pleasurable to work in as well. So, so it's a whole range of different sort of outcomes there. That's the kind of system, that's the sort of simple, sim simplistic characterization of the theory of change. So just talk a little bit more about the system as maturity matrix. So I so say we identified these kind of like big headings of like categories. So we're planning, governance, service delivery and outcomes uh, and evaluation. And within that, we identified a number of particular, as part of the analytical frame, specific aspects um, which we would want to um, understand and try and evaluate the sort of levels of maturity. So within under planning, we have strategy, commissioning and workplace planning and what we what we try to do is understand then how they move through these different five levels so on the next slide so you see on this is a planning has got three governance has got three various different aspects and we, in part these are kind of been shoehorned in to the, to the four headings but hopefully you get the idea that we're trying to group um particular elements which which are probably quite key to the ser services working or the, the, the experience of services going in a particular way. Um, and if that happens, the system becomes more mature, more efficient and effective, and therefore leads to positive outcomes. So just to, to give you a bit more of a understanding of what we mean by we do this sort of assessment. So I put a few of these in, um, in the slide pack. I, obviously there's one of these for each and every one of the, the aspects on the previous slide. Um, but this one just takes strategies, for example. And this is so that when we're doing the evaluation, we're trying to make this assessment uh, in, in, in strategy, I guess, to try and understand sort of at the broad level, so the heading at the top there, it's like, so is strategy seeking to understand and plan of action for local service to achieve long-term aims and objectives? Um, 
So that's the ultimate aim of what we want the strategy to do. And then it's trying to identify these different levels along the side. Uh, and then we've got like a description of, of what we mean by each of these ones. So basic, it's almost like, well, there's no or limited local strategy or play, plans in place. A very limited assessment or understanding of what local needs are. And then that moves through these different levels. Um, and when we're making this judgment, what we're trying to do is, is, is almost going back to the good, good points of evaluation is to try and get a, a wide range of views. So we, so we do this assessment one by um, speaking to the lifted neighbors together teams themselves. We speak to a range of stakeholders within the local areas and they can be from um, your big statutory bodies to other um, voluntary community sector work in the area as well as in particular, some instances, it might be private businesses, um, but also residents as well. Obviously, some of them, residents will have a better understanding of, um, can contribute more to understanding, particularly around sort of service delivery and experience type um, aspects. But uh, yeah, we, what we're trying to do is this kind of 360, um, and then obviously the value, us as an evaluator to make an assessment as well. Um, so this is for strategy, and then obviously this is a, a a similar one for leadership. Um, I won't go this through in detail because I think I, what I'd quite like to do is almost have to open it up, to be honest. Um, and commissioning, because obviously commissioning is quite key. I think we've you've probably picked up over the last, uh, particularly those of you who've been in the sessions for the last couple of days. Um, you could argue this is taking a particular slant on commissioning, um, very much around is it commissioning services that populations need uh, and making sure the service is available. So that, in this understanding, this, this is the first iteration of the model. We didn't really include much around sort of outcomes um, and, and the way that outcomes might, um, the targeting of outcomes might um, lead services to be delivered in a certain way. Um, so that's, as we continue to iterate the model, um, it's something which we probably try and integrate that into as we've learned as well, as well as trying to understand um, as long as, try, as well as trying to just evaluate the progression of the service, it's almost like the system is almost like us understanding what's the key aspects of the system as well that we need to include. And I guess that probably leads quite nicely to the sort of what I thought might be useful is in terms of a discussion. Um, so I guess sort of like broad questions that th I thought would be useful to almost consider, well, how useful do you think a systems matrix approach is to your work, whether that's you, you're doing one at the you're doing this kind of work at the minute. So therefore, actually just trying to understand and learn what you're doing or um, actually how it might be able to help you to understand a pathway to actually what you maybe need to do. Um, I guess one of the, what, what it does is I guess it's, it's sort of describing what systems maturity looks like at different levels for different aspects. I guess what it's also doing is almost saying, well, to get to the next level, this is what you might need to do. Um, I guess, I guess it, as well as how useful it is, I guess is what challenges might exist in sort of developing, developing and sort of applying a systems maturity matrix for your work. Um, they're useful to hear, I guess, do you think we're capturing the key systems infrastructure? So what do you, what do you think we'd need to understand about how systems and services work we've tried to be quite not have too many aspects we want to look at but um yeah you, you might think actually it's missing some key ones or it's overplaying some um and i guess it, i guess it's I guess it, how how would do you think is useful to to use it as a, a measurement tool um is the c360 is that the way to go should we be focusing on different act voices um I guess the other bit as well. So if you've got time, I guess it might be useful to think about um, if you've got any broader questions about the evaluation. So uh, I've probably talked for quite a while. So I thought I'd, uh, yeah, just open it up if anyone's got any any any, any sort of comments or questions they want to have, or if they want me to go back over anything in particular. Um, so that should help to keep... More of a question, really, if it's okay, Ian. Yes, just sure. making sure. Uh, trying to get my understanding clear because it's quite a lot you know it's a lot to take in no it is it's, it's probably one of these ones easy to see and like i was like hear it and then i'm gonna see it a bit in person and have a go <laughs> yeah uh, what it is is so much of the conference has uh, been about that first bit about listening to people and the difference that that can make and then this is focused entirely on the systems and 
measuring the maturity of the systems. Is there a kind of interface between that where you make sure that the systems are actually responding to the things that were heard, i.e. they're doing the right thing? Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's, that's a good question because I guess it's kind of, um, I guess there's a couple of bits there. I guess one, obviously this is one aspect of the evaluation. Um, so the, I think there's bits of this which we're trying to trying to where you you would draw out actually by by doing the sort of the listening actually is it delivering as the, the sort of the services would want to become more efficient effect so i guess it's that thing of actually well i guess it's us ensuring that we're identifying lists of um infrastructure actions so there are bits about customer experience which is about listening to the customer voice I think it's probably the aspects you've put up there probably don't speak to that quite as well um but there are other aspects which are a bit more about like uh, customer experience um engagement with neighborhoods use of um previous evidence so i guess it's like research you've done um with previous people around uh, and services about what works well and what doesn't work well so there's bits of it which feature in this uh, and i guess what that tries to do is um one i guess is, is understand well the way lifting everything together is promoted does it promote that and therefore to a more mature level of a system working um but also maybe like a lens question to actually well to get to the next level you maybe need to understand this a bit more it's, it's it's okay doing the conversation but if it's not going beyond that and informing other aspects like linking into the other aspects um if that makes sense. So it is, it's, it's, like it's one thing doing the conversation, but then you've got to act on the back of it and ensure that there's a um, that there's, I know, there's a network of services which can come in and help um, and they can engage. So I guess it, it then links to the other aspects. Um, I guess the other bit of it is there's other strands of the evaluation where we're more on that kind of yeah, standard process evaluation. Where, so we're doing interviews with um, people who have used services have benefited um, doing interviews with them um, partners and stakeholders and commissioners to try and understand the degree to which they see it all linking together if that answers your question <laughs> sorry quite a long-winded yeah. answer I think it does I suppose I'm just being really devil's advocate in yeah. the sense the fact that a lot of partners have got together and put together a strategy and have it and are monitoring it isn't automatically the same as that being the thing yeah. <laughs> that the people in that community want. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? I'm just interested in how those things marry yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I guess it's um, like in, the, in terms of the tool. I guess what it's saying is is very much around what do you listen to the community voice? And I guess what we try and pick up there is it's probably by doing the, 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 the 360 as well so that those are the areas where we really would would put more weight towards the kind of like user or resident experience of services um whereas other bits like strategy it might be a case of actually to very much more about like documents being in place and um and, and those aspects so as part of that we'll be trying to understand actually well what is it that the community needs so it might be the organizations x y and z are saying yeah yeah, we always listen to the community but actually we're also speaking to the community say well do you feel that do you sense actually in the way service delivering or, or are you in effect uh, providing an opinion that isn't actually listened to um or uh, yeah yeah so i guess how effective is community engagement how effective are you listening to different uh, people so yeah uh, it's yeah. definitely something which has come out in the evaluation so far, particularly as part of the baseline assessment. Um, and I guess it's that came within that if you saw the presentation before that that sort of question uh, that finding so far about the communities feel ignored. So they might have been um, engaged or <laughs> asked to take part in some consultation, but often it didn't feel like it was actually leading anywhere. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Please, well. Anyone else got a question about the? Uh, so I should just say, so um, obviously the slides will get shared. Um, the tool is also on. I think it's on the evaluation on which bit of the website. If not, I'll make sure it can become available so everyone can have a look at the tool as well. Because I think it's 
it's even for happy for people to use obviously it makes sense for people to adapt it to their own circumstances and i guess that's kind of sort of the prompt some of the prompting in the questions um but also that kind of view that sort of evaluation it works best when you do try and adapt it to what what's relevant to you the way you're working so Anyone else have any, any or want to think about, I guess, any of these sort of questions which I've put forward? Um, I'm interested to hear what barriers, that, like the second question, what barriers did you kind of come up against while trying to put this into practice? Um, yeah, it's, I guess it's, it's quite, I guess it, it, it's a different way of thinking about it, of, of doing, I guess people are used to, um, I guess a particular way of evaluation of generally quite like, either quantitative or um, qualitative. So I guess it's, it is different. So you're trying to get different voice to take part in it to get people to, to make that kind of honest assessment can be tricky at times. Having said that, I think the teams, um, when we've done it with them, have actually been quite open and honest, um, particularly in sort of the baseline stage of where they, where they were. I think. There's, there's this kind of sort of tension with actually, well, on one side you're saying systems change and thinking is is very complex and shouldn't be, um, quant isn't, quant isn't a quantified experience, isn't a quantifiable thing, but ultimately that's kind of what we're doing here. <laughs> so there is that kind of like a contradiction going on. Um, but I, I think that's the where we try to move it away from almost like a scoring based system. Um, obviously, there are five, so you could argue it's one, two, three, four, five, but it's just trying to actually, rather than take it away from almost being viewed as a sort of numerical, this is better than this, and that, it's almost like trying to understand your stages and, and ways of maturity, and actually you can go backwards and forwards, and you might get to one level and realise actually you weren't quite at that level as you, as, as you, as you get there. So I think there's that, there's that kind of contradiction as well that we've, experienced um not necessarily being pushed back i guess it's more probably a feeling that we feel like we have when we're doing it um the, I guess the, the other bit is actually well what do you include in it um and does everything need to be equally weighted so i guess it's that thing of well actually so we've identified so i have to go back to the numbers <laughs> so we've identified all these particular aspects uh, I think there's 11 on the top of my head, yep. <laughs> Quit counting in my head. But actually, do all 11 need to get to sustaining for you to be a fully mature system? Actually, probably not. It's probably, it, again, it's one of these situa different situations, different, different, horses, different courses, where actually, in some circumstances, you could probably just focus on particular aspects. So I think it's that kind of, challenge in terms of us trying to need to work out well which bits do we need to potentially work weight more more highly and i guess it'd be quite interesting to get other people's opinions on that and uh yeah which do you think are the most important and does that change potentially over time as well um i think it's of the projects we've evaluated which have taken these kind of systems approaches it, it's it's always been that tension of well, how do you jump in do you start really slowly at the kind of planning and governance end um trying to build relationships trying to get things in place but ultimately not deliver much and then you've kind of got that fear well we're not delivering much are we going to get beaten with a stick by a thunder or however it is or, or the other side of well, if you focus on the sort of service delivery aspects um uh, and to try to achieve outcomes, we're well, not really putting in place that kind of longer term planning and governance in place. I think it's that that's another sort of tension which which is definitely definitely come out. So yeah, but we need to get other people's opinions on that. Like, how do you how would you take forward a sort of systems approach? Um. I, I don't know. Well, that question, um, matter. <laughs> this question that just leads on from what you just said is in terms of going back to funders um, with these evaluations, how has that gone? Yeah. Um, just because when I hit, when I learn about something like this, you know, that would be, I think, a lot of people's initial thought is like, oh, 
I think it's great. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with some of the other conversations that have happened today and yesterday, you know, about moving away from numbers based evidence and all of this. And that's amazing. And I'd love to have more of that in, um, where I work. But I'm just interested as to how that actually looks when you are trying to get the yeah. money and make sure that these things can be sustainable. Yeah, no, that's good. It's a really good question. I think well, we've used this a few times. Uh, I guess, whether it's fortunately or unfortunately, I guess it's generally been with the funder. Uh, so it's, it's been like a big organization, which is almost like, and then funding smaller projects together. So one of the ones we did was um, a Save the Children uh, initiative called Children's Communities. And they, so they were the funder and they obviously bought into this and were quite happy for. Um, this kind of analytical tool um, we, it, for the delivery of the, 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 the say, um, children's communities initiative in the three particular neighbourhoods in England. Um, and again, it's probably similar to like lifting everything together. It, like ultimately, I guess, I guess it's going to um, community neural, but also to the big lottery. I guess, yeah, I'm not really sure how it's engaged with local stakeholders. And uh, I guess that's part of the challenge is that trying to well take something which is um complex like systems change and doesn't have any sort of particular kind of measurement built into it or understanding of it trying to but trying to build this kind of framework because i guess it's, it's kind of going back to i think we're ultimately we're, although you can criticize it this this type of method for trying to add maybe it's trying to make it quantifiable <laughs> or score based or a level based um but i guess it's just trying to appreciate actually what funders are probably even if, if they even if that there is movement towards this kind of new approach where you, it's less target driven there's still some level of sort of accountability and a standard framework which could be used for across a whole different range of interventions that kind of i'm not sure that answers the question or not. So i guess it's because we, we've never really been, ultimately we've never really been tested however hopefully i guess if, if it can get if this these types of approaches have used it kind of serves as sort of halfway house i think for commissioners so it's not necessarily outcomes based but it's um provides some sort of measurement against systems change thank you yeah it's okay. is anyone uh i guess is, is it people involved in kind of delivering Systems, is it systems approaches or are people generally to come for curious? It's almost like something they'd be interested to trying to seek to do in the future. What's everyone's backgrounds? I feel I should confess that I'm yeah. from the Rotary Community Fund and okay. funded this. Yeah. So I'm interested in it, but what I was surprised about when I looked at your evaluation, because I'm fairly new to the fund. Yeah was actually how much there was there. And I know it's a big project, but like there's low, uh, alongside this, there's lots of outcomes that, lots of hard outcomes that you're testing yourself against. And I was really surprised in a way there were so many hard outcomes. Yeah. So this is part of the picture, isn't it? It's very much just part of the picture. And again, it's quite a, I think it's, there's the, the long list of outcomes. And one, I guess we're trying to shorten it down to, um, uh, the, the the core outcomes i think it's just trying to recognize that actually what trying to view poverty is actually it's, it's quite multi-dimensional and i think just to use one measure mm. it more likely to lead you to a host student fortune because you, you either like you either shift that or don't shift it but actually there's a lot of things which are important along the way uh as well so you very rarely find that people are just um unemployed for example or on a low income there's often a whole range of sort of connected aspects and i think what we wanted to do is try and capture those sort of connected aspects um there's a little bit of capacity in that wide um to make sure that we're if we do find changes in a particular way where we would capture them and then we can try and link it to actually understanding um well is it plausible that we can say lifting everything together has affected that um so it's a bit of a reaction to, to both those aspects. One, that poverty is multidimensional, so therefore needs to be captured in different ways. Um, but also we want to make sure we're capturing, I guess, a whole range of different outcomes that are within poverty. Um, 
uh, and I guess it's, it's almost ensuring we get progression outcomes as well as the sort of the hard ones as well. So it, getting somebody into employment it might be quite easy if you're quite near to the labour market, quite a lot of labour market experience, um, not got decent qualifications, but actually a lot of people haven't. Um, they're actually quite a long way from the labour market. You might have had quite strong health needs. So therefore, try and capture that sort of progression along the way as well and recognise that as an outcome, as something, a positive outcome to which the, the project could have contributed towards is, is, is important as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry for there's a long list though. <laughs> How about everyone else? I think um, for for myself, um, we um, I work for a East Ayrshire Council, um, and currently we are looking at the whole sort of place based approach. Where so we have a team um, within the council called Vibrant Communities, um, and and we. have We've been moving towards this for for quite a long time now. You no, know, like the changes that 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 I have seen, you no, know, over the last sort of ten years has been absolutely amazing. And um, you no, know, just in the way that we we approach things, the way that we think about things, you no, know, as a local authority, um, and it's 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 very very different, you no, know, to anything that I previously kind of experienced. Yeah. Um, and I think the approach is. is built on having you no know, people in communities at the heart of everything that we do. Um, so taking that approach, um, for me, it's just been like really, really like, yeah. like job changing, you no know, life changing, you no know, like just so many different things. Um, and just like, looking at some of your, um, your slides in terms of like the evaluating and things like that. Um, I think one of the things that, that I can always struggle with is that it is normally number crunching, um, whereas a lot of the work that I do, I'm a community worker, and a lot of the work that I do isn't just based on numbers. A lot of the work that I do is based on you know, people's life experiences, you know, from the minute that, that I've met them to the conversations that I've had with them to see them grow, develop, you know, and, and, and progress on in terms of look where you no know, when I originally met them. Um and it's things like that that you no know, for me um I, I would really like to get better at capturing. Yeah. Um so in terms of like the whole kind of tool things like that, like you no, know, I'll be um, looking forward to this um and seeing more about how you like you've um, connected all of this together. No, because I don't do this in isolation. I do work with a lot of yeah. you know, colleagues, partners, you no know, various different people. Um, so it would be really, really interesting for me uh, um, in particular just to see um, the whole sort of you no know, tool that you use in order to do that. So yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I think it's I think it's important. I think it's important to caption. I guess it's. Maybe you can maybe you just get your reflection, like I guess, how it, people adapt and, and move away. I guess because as we've been beaten by the stick for so long with this kind of numbers-based way of it's, it's not really even evaluate because evaluating is just, say more about learning and <laughs> developing and I guess making the case to do things. Whereas I think it, it seems to be more going back to what Gary's point about by performance management, doesn't it? And I think but it's probably got people working in a certain way and I think it's that kind of well, there probably is a, a, a I was like a process to actually get people to feel like they are freed from the shackles of actually well I need to get this person for example into work um, and I need it all to be attributable to me as well or my organization uh, whereas actually if you've taken these different approaches actually it's it's, it's more about actually but well, what are you delivering? How are you delivering it? Um, I guess just at the end of it, I guess it's taken away the sort of attribution of an outcome to an organisation uh, and more about actually, well, as the place, uh, I attribute to the individual, but also and the, and the, I look at it in terms of the place as well. So and I, have we lifted it out of poverty in the, in the context of labor, lifting neighbourhoods together? So, yeah.
Yeah, it's, it's how 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 are people in, in people you work with? How how do they have they found the process of moving to these kind of new ways of working? I, I can't say it's been very easy. Yeah, <laughs> and it is a journey. Yeah. Um, and I think some of it is realizing that it it's still very very similar to to no. Yeah. I'm I'm still in essence doing the same job. Only I've got more autonomy. It's it's much much easier. You no, know, the way you no know, I I get to deliver it is you no know, that that's down to me. Um. So and like you no know, working with you no know, colleagues and things like that. Um. There is still sort of some mindsets. You no. Know, oh, but I've got this. I've, I've got this part of my job. Yeah. You no. Know, so there's key things in my job that I've still got to do. You no. Know, like. No, I'm 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 employed to carry out you no know, certain things, um, mm -hmm. but it's how it's how I do that. It, yeah. I think that's what the key is. You no, know, just because I'm asked, for example, I, I, um, part of my role is to do community action plans, um, but it's how it's how you go about that. It's about all that. You no, know, it's back to the engagement. It's about back to the, the conversations that you're having. It's about back to Know, like they come back to the people and you know like really encouraging you know that you know that local level conversation so that then creates a, a very different take on like developing that so yeah it, it's yeah so I've, I've actually found the last couple of days really i'm like oh yeah <laughs> 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 it is very much a, a process i guess the, the point the assumption is actually it's, it's almost like well colleagues and, and frontline front line will actually switch quite simple to it and actually it's, it's that recognition is not it actually is a, a process it's a, it's a different way of working um particularly when you've come from more special and i think there's probably certain sectors where obviously specialism is more ingrained and necessarily so in some instances i guess like medical side obviously you can have a lot of qualifications and but again it's that how that also blends in with the more um system approach to working yeah it's it's interesting anyone else want to reflect on there um yeah. i think there's only a couple um, of minutes so if we come in oh i was just gonna it, it feels like I would be finishing the workshop on a low because that would be nice to hear from the other lady. Her good experiences at work. But um, it was just a quick reflection that I guess the impact of some of the ways of assessing practice um, has def definitely had quite a negative impact in some projects at my work, but it's very variable. So, you know, there was one program I was on funded by this fund and there were some young people who I was working with for like six plus months because that's what they yeah. needed and then a very similar program but from a different funder we're now really pushed and now I'm doing maximum six weeks with each young people yeah. with each young person um, and I guess the knock-on effect of that on your relationship with your organisation um, and then the organisation's relationship with the community is obviously quite yeah. negative. Whereas in the other programme, you know, I would say that we were maybe potentially working on one of these areas of, in like building and developing because I was had the time and resources to start building better connections yeah. with um, the community around a young person. So, yeah, it's that was just my brief experience. Yeah. No, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's probably seen quite a number of places, isn't it? That kind of uh, the way traditional ways of working, particularly around our targets, it, it it shapes particular ways you have to work with people, um, and it's not always the most efficient. Um, I keep, sorry, I keep going back to like labour market type programs, but like it's like a work program. It works probably works really well with someone who's got particular characteristics, but if you're a long way from the labor market, you need, um, you don't want somebody who's almost like driven by, actually I need to get somebody into work because if that's how I get my funding, 
it, it, you almost need the service to be a bit more flexible and to, yeah, more, more integrated as well. So yeah, yeah. Now, conscious of time, so I don't know if anyone's got any fine things they want to say, um, but I guess I just want to thank everyone. I really enjoyed that discussion. Um, hope you found it useful. Um, so that, I think the slides definitely get made available afterwards, but I'll always I'll sort of try and ensure that the um, the full tools made available as well so you can you can see how that works um, on the front sheet of it it's got some instructions about how to use it as well particularly when we've sent it out to teams because we just get the teams to do it themselves we say organize a workshop um, discuss these aspects and try and position where you think you are so we, we provide that guidance on the front as well about how it can be used it's not the answer probably um, it's just a way that we've identified um, and currently we're using um, Obviously, we're seeking to adapt it as we're going along. So, yeah, any comments you have as well, I'd be grateful to, to hear them. So, yeah, but good luck in your individual projects. And, uh, yeah, thanks for meeting. Thanks, Celia. Thank you.